Now, this gets us quickly to the third and final bit for today. Namely, we need to lift our sights, to set our sights on well-being, so that life can become and health and health care can become about making life more wonderful rather than just less horrible. Beneficence. Here, this gets right at the distinction between a disease-centered and a patient or human-centered model of care, and here is where caring becomes a creative, generative, even playful act. Play may sound like a funny word here, but it's also one of our highest forms of adaptation. Consider every major compulsory effort it takes to be human. The need for food is birth cuisine. The need for shelters given rise to architecture, the need for cover, fashion, and for being subjected to the clock. Well, we invented music. So, since dying is a necessary part of life, what might we create with this fact? By play, I am in no way suggesting that we take a light approach to dying, or that we mandate any particular way of dying. There are mountains of sorrow that cannot move, and one way or another, we will all kneel there. Rather, I am asking we make space, physical, psychic room, to allow life to play itself all the way out, so that rather than just getting out of the way. Aging and dying can become a process of crescendo through to the end. We can't, we can't solve for death. <laughs> I know some of you are working on this. <laughs> Meanwhile, we can, <laughs> we can design towards it. Now, parts of me died early on, and that's something we can all say one way or another.、And、I got to redesign my life around this fact, and I tell you, it has been a liberation to realize you can always find a shock of beauty or meaning in what life you have left, like that snowball lasting for a perfect moment, all the while melting away. If we love such moments ferociously. Well, then maybe we can learn to live well, not in spite of death, but because of it. Let death be what takes us, not lack of imagination. Thank you.